But we begin with our first guest today, Democratic Long Island Congressman Steve Israel, here now to explain his recent announcement to give up his congressional seat, to retire to private life, perhaps to write some more books. And welcome to the show, Congressman. It's great to be with you, Richard, as always. 16 years, right? Eight terms? Yes, sir. So why leave? Why are you leaving? Well, several reasons. Number one, uh, I just think it's time to pass the torch to somebody else. Uh, you know, I don't think that being in Congress necessarily should be a, a lifetime gig. Uh, I think there comes a time when you should give somebody else a chance. Secondly, you know, I wrote this novel, this uh, comedy novel, uh, about two years ago. I loved the process. It did very well. Uh, I'd like to spend some more time writing, uh, and uh, this will give me an opportunity to do so. And third, I, I have to tell you, the fundraising regimen, uh, after a while, it became very fatiguing. I couldn't stand to ask one more donor <laughs> for one more dollar. Yeah, that's a dilemma. And we'll talk about your books more, but to go back to the original question, because i got to tell you, people are stunned. Uh, they were like, what? Comes from Israel's even? Why would you give up such a prestigious position? It's a position of power. Even though you may be in the minority all the time, you're still a, a, a U.S. congressman. There's got to be some other reason, no? No, you know, people see conspiracies behind every <laughs> yes, cloud. Right. Uh, also, you know, people say it's a prestigious position. You know, I'm a guy who just likes to hang out in Long Island diners. Uh, I'm a guy who likes Long Island pizza places. I uh, come home every single weekend. I don't spend a weekend in Washington. And um, with all the prestige there may be, I prefer to spend my time with my neighbors in, in a local diner. Well, you'll get to do that now, but what do you think you accomplished in your 16 years? You're there a long time. That's mm -hmm. Not everyone gets to get eight terms. A lot of people are one or done or a couple yeah. of terms. Eight terms is a lot. The what do you think you I'm got done? The most proud of is our work on behalf of veterans. Uh, secured $8.4 million in back pay for the veterans that I represented. And these are people who go back as far as World War II, who were shunted aside by their government, denied a medal denied retroactive pay and they'd come to my office we would just get it done for them and there was nothing richard nothing meant more to me than going to an american legion post a vfw post handing a veteran uh, his or her back pay and, and just seeing that, that twinkling in their eyes uh, and a faith restored that government can sometimes do the job for them. Well, I know that's got to be a gratifying feeling, but, you know, we look at these statistics that show that we have homeless vets. Yeah. We have an extraordinarily high unemployment rate for them. When you meet them, you can see, even in those who are functioning, the post-traumatic stress disorder that virtually all of them have suffered. Uh, you know, treatments haven't always worked. Have we failed our vets that have returned? If there's a single vet, who is homeless, a single vet who's underemployed or unemployed, that's a national failure. Uh, we, uh, several years ago, we had 130,000 veterans a night sleeping on streets. These people wore the, the uniform of the United States military and they were sleeping on streets. We've gotten those numbers down considerably, but we've got to continue to, to drive those numbers down. We've got to do some entrepreneurial things in the, in the VA. We have the, the jewel in the crown, the Northport VA Hospital, but too many VA facilities throughout the country uh, need to be fundamentally reformed and improved. So is this just a matter of throwing more money at it? It just needs more money, bigger staffing, uh, Veterans Administration perhaps needs more people, or is there something wrong with the approach it's we're not taking? Just, it's not just uh, throwing more money at it. Of course, we shouldn't simply throw money uh, at issues. Um, we need a, a VA uh, that puts veterans first. We need to change the systems uh, in the VA. We also need a VA that is willing to work with the private sector, uh, that is willing to create new partnerships and uh, doesn't guard its bureaucratic turf to the extent that this VA has over several administrations. Yeah, and you run into that a lot in Washington, I'm Very sure. Frustrating. Yeah, so, you know, uh, what about some of these approaches people have taken? Uh, we did a story not long ago about uh, veterans getting up on stage and doing stand-up comedy. There's been talk about transcendental meditation. Yeah, we're learning there are so many new and alternative ways of dealing with PTSD. There's a group called Project Nine Line. I'm working with them. Uh, Project Nine Line uh, offers uh, people with PTSD new creative outlets, uh, so stand-up comedy or artwork. Uh, Nelson DeMille, great author, maybe not as great an author as you are, uh, having written a book, but a great author. I brought him to Long Island University, and we did a writing therapy for veterans. It was phenomenal. So we can be doing that. We're learning that mindfulness and meditation significantly reduces the effects of PTSD uh, and may even help with mild traumatic brain injuries. It seems to make sense, and we find that that 
these sort of approaches are working in all uh, medicinal uh, treatments, so why wouldn't it work there? Let me talk to you about the biggest problem that it seems like folks on Long Island have. They feel like they can't afford to live here. Their kids are taken okay. off. You know, on paper, it looks like we make good dough, but, mm -hmm. you know, we had the head of the Health and Welfare Council of Long Island on here saying that, uh, you know, you need $103,000 if you have a couple of kids just to get by. Yeah. You know, it always amazed me when I would go on the floor of the house and talk about the need for federal investments in Long Island. My colleagues would say, Long Island? I mean, yeah, that's right. the Hamptons. I mean, you guys are rich <laughs> over there. And I would say to them, you know, $250,000 may make you rich in Huntington, West Virginia. But it does not make you That's rich true. in Huntington, Long Island. We have the highest cost of living in the country. And so federal uh, tax codes and federal investments ought to recognize the fact that it just costs a heck of a lot more money to live here. Oh, well, is the middle class getting a good deal, though? I mean, because we keep seeing these surveys coming out showing that we're falling further behind, that there's one recent study that shows that the lower class and the upper class are actually larger than the middle class You're in absolutely America. Absolutely right. Now. Pew Corporation did a study yeah. two weeks ago. I spend most of my time in Congress and will continue to spend most of my time out of Congress trying to figure out how we strengthen the middle class. So I saw a Pew study two weeks ago. If you're in the middle class in America right now, you're in a minority. 48% of uh, Americans are in the middle class. 52% are either richer or poor. That's a good way to watch the economy deteriorate when you lose that vital middle. No question. It used to be a much more bulging kind That's of right. maybe 60, 70% mm -hmm. was middle class. Uh, so what's needed? A tax cut? I mean, everybody lobbies for their tax mm -hmm. cut. Then they'll say, well, the, actually, the poor need it more. Or if the rich get it, then they'll invest more in their businesses and we'll all have more jobs. Very confusing to figure out how you deal with this. Oh, I think there were quite e easy and sensible ways of doing with it. I'll Which give you are? an example. We spend $40 billion every 10 years subsidizing the richest oil companies on earth, and yet we say we can't afford a tax cut for the middle class. No, we ought to reverse that. We ought to take that $40 billion, not give it to rich oil companies, and instead invest it in the middle class. Yeah, that's one of the things you've been consistent about yes. with the breaks for the mm -hmm. oil companies. How about Social Security and Medicare? It seems like we keep postponing the inevitable. Yeah. There's some hard choices ahead. What do you think needs we to be done there? We have a demographic crisis occurring in the United States right now and around the world, the fastest growing population in the world will be the elderly, uh, our pension systems, uh, Medicare, Social Security, private pensions. We've got to take a look at those to make sure that we can take care of that burgeoning population. Do we have to raise the, the year you can retire and who would be affected by depends that? Depends on who. I want to raise the retirement age for a heavy equipment operator or somebody who's right. doing construction. Depends on who it is. All right. So that, that's part of what's going to get done by who takes your place, though. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like you didn't get done and, and, and feel like it was unfinished business as you go away now? The one major regret I have. Uh, is that we haven't done enough on infrastructure in this country, which is a job creator. Not only do you th see things being built, roads and bridges, uh, highways, but it puts people to work. And I wish that we could get Republicans and Democrats together uh, to really be, do a big, bold infrastructure development corporation. You favor a third track for Long Island? I think it's a good idea. I think that's part of infrastructure. I want to make sure uh, that uh, on the impacts uh, to, to folks. But look, we've got to rebuild our infrastructure in the country. All right, so now book two is coming yes. out soon here. Uh, Morris is the main character? Is that Global the... War on Morris was the first novel. Did very well. Thank He's you for a, asking. What, a pharmacist or something? Was Morris that is a is pharmacist in Great Neck uh, yeah. who uh, lays low, doesn't do anything, <laughs> but the federal government declares him as a terrorist through oh, a mistake. Oh, goodness. And so what's uh, book two going to be about that? Uh, that book two is a similar parody okay. satire of Washington. Thank goodness it's a parody, and uh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad he's not being uh, prosecuted for being right. a Mets fan, which I hope he is, because I know you are, and you're looking I, forward. I, when I decided to retire from Congress, I called the uh, Fred Wilpon. I said, I'm available to platoon <laughs> third base. He said, no, thank you. <laughs> no back problems here, but retiring Long Island Congressman Steve Israel, we wish you well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your years of effort and for speaking with us today, and we'll be watching what comes out of uh, your uh, sort of retirement. Thank you, sir.